Fred Koch, co-founder of what is now his namesake, Koch Industries, grew up at Texas and trained as an engineer at MIT. He developed an improved method of converting heavy oil into gasoline and was involved in refining, engineering, and ranching businesses prior to his death in 1967. Led by his son Charles, who joined the company in 1961, Coke Industries has grown from those modest beginnings into the second largest privately held corporation in North America after Cargill, according to Forbes. Now, if you want to know more about Cargill, which is the largest privately owned company in America, I made a video on it, and the link is in the description. So Coke Industries turned into a global conglomerate with annual revenues of more than $110 billion as of 2018. Today, Charles continues as Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Coke Industries. David Koch is Executive Vice President and Joe Moeller is President and Chief Operating Officer. Under their leadership, Coke Industries has expanded and diversified globally. The company's remarkable expansion is testimony to the power of core values such as integrity, humility, and a spirit of entrepreneurship to create real value for customers, communities, and employees. Perhaps the best way to understand Coke Industries is to view it as a collection of capabilities continually serving searching for new ways to create value. The privately owned company owns a diverse group of companies engaged in trading, finance, chemicals, asphalt, pulp and paper, and also ranching. With 120,000 employees in about 60 countries, Coke Industries also has about half of its business in the US. Based in the town of Washita, Kansas, it has an amazing story with lots of turmoil for a family business. So make yourself comfortable and let's begin the story. In 1925, Fred Koch from MIT together with classmate Louis Winkler joined an engineering firm in Wichita, Kansas, which was renamed the Winkler Koch Engineering Company. In 1927, they developed a more efficient thermal cracking process for turning crude oil into gasoline. This process threatened the competitive advantage of established oil companies, which later on sued for patent violation. Temporarily forced out of business in the United States, they turned to other markets, including the Soviet Union, where Winkler Koch built 50 cracking units between 1925 and 1932. During this time, Koch came to despise communism and Joseph Stalin's regime. In his 1960 book, A Businessman Looks at Communism, Koch wrote that he found the USSR to be a land of hunger, misery, and terror. According to his son Charles Koch, virtually every engineer he worked with there was purged. In 1940, Koch joined new partners to create a new firm, the Wood River Oil and Refining Company, which is today known as Koch Industries. In 1946, the firm acquired the Rock Island Refinery and Crude Oil Gathering System near Duncan, Oklahoma. Wood River was later renamed the Rock Island Oil and Refining Company. Charles Koch joined the Rock Island in 1961, having started his career at the management consulting firm Arthur Little. He became president in 1966 and chairman at age 32 upon his father's death the following year. The company was renamed Koch Industries in the honor of Fred Koch the year after his death. At that time, it was primarily an engineering firm with part interest in the Pine Bend Refinery in Minnesota, a crude oil gathering system in Oklahoma, and some cattle ranches. In 1968, Charles approached the Union Oil of California about buying their interest in Great Northern Oil Company and its Pine Bend Refinery, but the discussions quickly stalled after the Union asked for a large premium. In 1969, Union Oil began trying to market their interest in Great Northern by telling potential buyers that Coke's controlling interest could be thwarted by currying favor with another owner, Howard Marshall II. When Marshall discovered this, he threw his lot in with Coke. They together acquired a majority interest in the company and ultimately bought the Union's interest. Ownership of Pine Bend Refinery led to several new businesses and capabilities, including chemicals, fibers, polymers, asphalt, and other commodities such as petroleum, coke, and sulfur. These were followed by global commodity trading, gas liquids processing, real estate, pulp and paper, risk management, and finance. In 1970, Charles was joined at the family firm by his brother David Koch. Having started as a technical services manager, David became president of Koch Engineering in 1979. Now, let's take a look at who are exactly the Koch brothers, as you surely have heard of them. The pair that would become known as the Koch brothers are in fact two of four. Frederick is the eldest born in 1933 followed by Charles. 
1935 and twins Bill and David in 1940. Charles, David and Bill followed their father in earning engineering degrees from the prestigious Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Charles was groomed as Koch's successor, becoming president of the family business after his father died in the 1960s and renaming it the Koch Industries in his honor. David and Bill both took roles in the company with Charles in charge. The firm began its rapid expansion from a regional player to what is now the second largest private company in the US. But along the way, he lost the support of his brother Bill, who in 1980, apparently feeling silent sidelined and concerned over the company's direction joined forces with Frederick to try to oust Charles. Instead, the company's board sided with Charles, who fired the bill. The road did not end there, and in 1983, Charles and David bought out their brother's share of the firm. More lawsuits followed, with Bill and Frederick alleging they had been cheated. It would take almost two decades for a court to rule that while some key facts have been omitted during the negotiations, it did not affect the sale price. The dispute was so harsh that the brother ignored each other at their mother's funeral in 1990. The brothers have also made significant financial contributions to libertarian and conservative think tanks and have donated primarily to Republican Party candidates running for office. A network of like-minded donors organized by the Kochs pledged to spend $889 million from 2009 to 2016, and its infrastructure has been said to rival that of the Republican National Committee. They actively fund and support organizations that contribute significantly significantly to Republican candidates, and in particular that lobby against efforts to expand the government's role in healthcare and combating global warming. By 2010, they had donated more than $100 million to dozens of free market and advocacy organizations. In May 2019, the Kochs announced a major restructuring in their philanthropic efforts. Going forward, the Koch network will operate under the umbrella of Stand Together, a nonprofit focused on supporting community groups. The stated priorities of the restructured Koch network include efforts at increasing employment, addressing poverty and addiction, ensuring excellent education, building a stronger economy, and bridging divides and building respect. That's all for this video. If you like what you saw, please comment for possible improvement, subscribe and check out my other videos, their links are all in the description, thank you and see you in the next one.